this is an, a time. Uh, this is a time of equipping of the saints, and uh, you know we'll try and cover the most uh, prescient information and the most commonly asked questions. But going through this whole, if you will, over and over in my head, I think this thing has been so orchestrated by uh, by the living God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we we could not have arranged in South America. What came out, and those of you that were there with us on the uh, True Legends expedition were blown away, too, because you watched a very high-ranking, quote, Vatican officials lie to your faces and tell you that Father Gamara, Father Gamara, by the way, Tom, was the guy that gave Anselm P. Ramla the permission to excavate uh, in the Cori Concha into the Shinkana, the underground tunnel, system that basically everybody knew existed, but the official position of the church is there is no such thing. And why this is important is because Anselm, basically, and this guy's been all over the world, one of the most famous explorers in the world, and some of the most striking uh, adventures and, uh, and um, oh, good night, the exposure of so much hidden archaeology and real archaeology, there was, a, there was an attempt, even while we were there, they said that Father Gamara was not on the uh, premises. And lo and behold, he literally shows up in the courtyard. We got him on film stating, you know, and he called Anselm a P, P, a P, like Pi, is uh, his middle, uh, middle initial and name. And he acknowledged and said on camera, yes, it's all true. Even when we got the guys in their multi-thousand dollar suits, their mics, their headphones, people flipping out, you know, trying to deny it, trying to basically say you can't film, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I, I love it. I called it God's sense of humor because they were telling us that we can't do this, we can't do that. And in walks the man that can validate it all. But what we're trying to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to bring you uh, six different viewpoints of not overlapping investigation, but unique. And see, this is kind of like the temple that was built in the wilderness. Everything has been built separately, and now God himself is bringing the pieces of the puzzle together. And, you know, I've quoted Newton's statement that at the time of the end, God's going to raise up a group of men who are going to be given to prophecy, but it's going to be amongst much clamor and opposition. Tom, you quoted the scripture that there will be coming a time when men will kill us, claiming they're doing God a favor. I already see the lines being drawn. I believe this this Charisma article, and I will answer that woman, uh, is the first a shot or salvo. If Jesus himself said, just as in the days of Noah, you've got to understand, we live in George Orwell's prophetic written world now, and he made the statement, they who control the past determine the future. I believe that by the time you've listened to Derek Gilbert talking about inception, you've listened to Dr. Uh, uh, Michael, uh, you know, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Lake. I'm sorry, Dr. Michael Lake. Uh, I'm just trying to keep the order in my head. He did the most marvelous job on Doug, your show last week. He was ex. Ex exquisite. So when you hear all these guys, L.A., Timothy Alberino, who's got this stuff dialed in like like nobody's tomorrow, and plus he's half my age, Tom. The thing is, is that we're we're that's important because the young people have got to grow up in the things of God. Turn off their video games. Turn off the devil vision and begin to seek the truth to seek the truth of God's word. And, and, you know, I'm concerned, Doug, for the generation now that is right behind ours, I guess they'd almost be now our grandchildren's age coming up, is that fact that they, they know not God. The hunger for things of God, it's dying out. The wax of, uh, the excuse me, the love of many is waxing cold. The salt has lost its savor. And, you know, you can go on wanting to make uh, happy talk in Charisma Magazine, and that's even a, a mis- uh, named magazine if they're taking that position because the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. If Jesus didn't think the days of Noah were important, and just as Tom listed Mark uh, Matthew 
Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew 24, uh, Luke 21, Mark 10 or 11, and all the prophecies of Daniel, all the prophecies of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Amos, uh, Haggai, Hosea, Zechariah. These are not in order, by the way. I'm just saying this. And the greatest prophet of all is Jesus. And, and, and when if people will not listen to that, and, you know, I understand now where uh, basically there is there has been a gospel ignorance that has resulted in the divorce from those who claim to know Jesus as Lord and Savior to not even believing that anymore, claiming Jesus is a metaphor of good, the devil is a metaphor of evil, and that, uh, you know, Jesus just came along to help us live better lives. That's horse manure. Without the blood of Jesus, there is no redemption. So why is this situation in Branson so important? I can tell you this, that when men of God like Henry and David Langford are praying and fasting, praying and fasting, calling on God to make and to move amongst the people of God, something's going to happen. And I mean that for a good state. We're going to give you the background. And, it, you know, some people say, well, it's so scary. No, it's not scary. Your primary weapon in overcoming fear is knowing what is coming on the horizon. What do you think people go to fortune tellers and read chicken entrails or basically, you know, do horoscopes or do all the things or, you know, do human sacrifice? They want to know what the future holds. And so just as they who control the past determine the future, they're doing everything they can to try and get in to the space-time continuum and to change history. Well, I got news for you. The God of heaven allows them only to go so far. So when people tell you time is speeding up, it literally is speeding up because it's a biblical statement for the elect's sake. And, uh, you know, the idea simply is this. In Branson, you'll be presented with, I would say, six very, very determined and, I would say, highly researched efforts of everyone that has has even been invited to that. And it's not that we think that we know everything or that nobody knows anything else, and I'd have people suggest that because they're not invited. I say, look, this thing came together fast. This is who the Lord laid on my heart, and I've never met Dr. Michael Lake. I just recently met L.A. Marzulli in uh, uh, Peru. And obviously, I know Derek from his interviews, and I actually coined a term, Tom. I don't know if you know this, but I now have a new word. It's called uh, Encyclopedia Gilbertica. Something like you know, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean, I don't think uh, there's somebody that can do a better interview than Derek. That's not flattery. That's not, uh, you know, anything other than that. So the the purpose of all of this at Branson, and then that for you to take it forth from that, is to get you trained. Because I'm telling you this, when, when what continues to happen, it's already happening in Houston, and if you haven't noticed, ladies and gentlemen, the entire red state area along the Gulf Coast, now going up the East Coast, isn't it interesting? It sure isn't hidden California, and it sure isn't li- I hitting the liberal, uh, uh, if you will, I call it hellhole states. What it's hitting is the red state. And so we're talking about gasoline. You know, Tom, I posted, a, I think, an alert yesterday in my alert section and told everybody gas is going to dry up and then it's going to be food. People don't understand Houston is not only one of the biggest ports in the United States, third largest city, but it feeds. It, it literally, and no pun on the word, but it provides food and all the goods, the entire East Coast going up into the central plains of the United States. So I, I, it's already in the land. The famine is coming. And if you think 8 to $10 a gas for gasoline, which is now uh, being seen in Dallas, wait until you see 10 bucks for a can of uh, soup, uh, you know, chunky bee soup, 10 bucks. You think that's so far-fetched? You watch it. You see, I've come, I've come to the point, and you know I've said this, Doug, you know I've said this, Tom, but people don't want to know the truth because, quote, it scares them. It's not that it scares them primarily. It's that it demands action on their part. How many people stayed in Houston seeing the horrific satellite pictures because they listened to the words of a man who obviously now in retrospect has lost all credibility, the mayor, and this is the same thing over and over and over. I posted another alert, and it's all based on prophecy by um, my friend, and she's a former DHS FEMA 
you know, uh, emergency management person telling that they knew about this hurricane months ago and that the whole thing is the moving of entire populations out of areas into control zones. I know her. She's, she is who she says she is. So how is this important to what we're talking about tonight? I know Tom Horn very well. We've spent a lot of time, a lot of years on talk radio. Uh, I think a room in their home is devoted to Steve. I've been out there so many times, and thank you, and, and Nita, for your lovely hospitality. But the point is, is that we're doing what God has called us to do. 